Fora TV. The world is thinking. Tan Le, a remarkable entrepreneur, has uh, started a company. Can we press? Yeah, there we go. That uh, is finally building a brain controller for the rest of the world. We think it almost works, and uh, with luck. We've asked uh, somebody appropriate to help her demonstrate that. So, Tan, stage is yours. Thanks, Mike, um, and thank you for uh, including me in this session because magic, um, I think, is and and mind control is probably mankind's most grandest and oldest fantasies. I can remember back um, just watching Eric. Um, Performance earlier, I can remember when I was a little girl thinking and watching a magic performance, thinking, "Now I could do that myself. If only I could think something and make that move." And watching the Star Wars series, the same thought crossed my mind. And it wasn't until I was 26, um, over dinner one night, it was quite serendipitous that I actually uh, had the opportunity to meet. Um, One of my friends, a uh, world-renowned neuroscientist, Professor Alan Snyder, who is probably most well known for the theory behind the optical fiber, for which he won a Marconi Prize in 2001. And ha Alan had dev devoted his entire life to researching about the brain and, wow, well, this light is bright, and understanding <laughs> how it how it actually affects autistic savants. And his theory um, was all about um, the idea that. Everybody has an inner genius, and it's our perception, it's our education that actually uh, prevents us from being able to tap into this inner genius. Anyway, the, the conversation over dinner lasted several hours, and it was 3 a.m. in the morning when we started to talk about the ideas around communication and the brain. And this uh, really started the concept behind emotive. So if you look at the way that we interact with machines up until this point in time, it's always involved some form of direct or conscious command, whether it's something as simple as turning on the lights with a switch or even as complex as programming software. We've always had to give a machine a command or a series of commands in order for it to perform a specific function for us. But on the other hand, if you look at the communication between people, It's actually a, a lot more interesting um, and much more informative because we take into account far more than what is explicitly expressed. So we observe facial expressions, we observe body language, and from that we can start to intuit feelings and emotions into our dialogue with one another. And this is an area that is completely lacking in our communication with machines. And so our vision at Emotive, which is um, the company that I co-founded together with Alan Nam and Neil Westy, um, our belief is that the next generation of human-computer interaction needs to evolve beyond the limits of conscious or direct inputs. Uh, and this idea of being able to integrate both conscious and non-conscious commands into the dialogue will play a really big part. And this is what we call total communication. Um, and really, when you look at the technology landscape and the way that it's changing, um, there is some really interesting trends. The nature of information is tra ch changing radically. Um, searching, for example, you know, in the past, it's very simplistic with just data and text, but now you've got multimedia type applications, audiovisual um, type applications, interactive applications, uh, and you need a much more efficient way of looking at content. Um, I have, what, 3,000 songs in my iTunes. If I actually had to manually rank um, from one to five stars every single song, every time I listen to the, the, the piece, it's a very tedious process, and I really don't have the time or the energy or the inclination to do that. But if I was to have the headset on, and as I was listening to music, it was able to understand my experience and start to tally and rank my preferences, um, then that becomes something far more interesting. So it can be a very interesting tool and a very efficient tool for searching, for classifying information, for pre presenting information and content that's relevant to you and allows machines to dynamically change um, in real time to reflect what you want. 
Um, and this sort of individualization, personalization is becoming very important um, as we move towards a much more real time, immediate um, sort of world. So the idea was great. We um, finished off dinner at around uh, 3.30 and we went home and we couldn't sleep that night. None of us. Um, n my business partner in a previous venture, myself and Alan, who had, had this dialogue over dinner, um, the three of us really had trouble sleeping that night. And three months later, we connected in Melbourne, Australia over dinner again and said, we need to really start a business around this. Um, and so we started Emotive. Um, and whilst the idea was great, um, here's our challenge. We've got a, uh, I suppose the, the, the helmet-like structure over the top of the brain there is how far removed um, the headset is. It's totally non-invasive technology and what we're looking at is really changes in electrical fluctuations, which is the result of billions of active neurons inside the brain um, you know, interacting with each other and the chemical reaction just emits this electrical impulse. And um, we scoured the world for literature around this. Sure, you know, Alan had devoted his entire life to researching the brain and he had some insights, but this was, you know, brand new work. And we looked at the world's literature around this and there's been, there had been uh, some great work done in implants, um, or inserting metal probes inside the brain, but nothing that was non-invasive that really provided the type of resolution that we wanted to achieve um, to create, create the type of um, interface device that, that was really the essence of, of our dreams. So we were wondering how we might be able to do that. So looking at fMRI studies, um, looking at even um, the work that of, of people who had been there before uh, in terms of inserting implants into the brain, the localised source um, is very consistent across the population. So if you were to experience a particular emotion or think a particular thought, the same region of the brain would be activated consistently across the po population. But if you look at this cortex, which is the structure that we associate with the brain, but it, because of its inherent differences in the folding of the structure across the population, it's individualised, much like our, our fingerprint. And so from a signal standpoint, if you're looking at an electrical signal, even though it comes from the same source deep inside the brain, by the time it travels through the cortex, gets bounced across um, the various uh, folding structure and gets projected onto the surface of the scalp to be measured by this non-invasive process, the signal actually looks random across the population. And this was our fundamental challenge. Um, and uh, it was not an easy problem to crack. Um, we really didn't have any ideas as to how we might approach this problem, but one thing we thought we would do is not to uh, bring in anybody who had spent 30 years um, applying their knowledge to this field. Uh, we assembled a team of, of scientists, very, very intelligent people, scientists, engineers, who were really um, experts in their own fields, but very different. Um, you know, digital, digital signal processing people, AI people, um, neural network classifiers, you know, molecular biologists, um, evolutionary biologists, to really tackle this problem. And what we came up with was a mathematical algorithm that unfolds the cortex so that we can map the signal far closer to its source. Obviously, it's not the same as inserting a metal probe into the brain or um, you know, having an invasive procedure to implant um, something into your brain to measure um, the results, but it certainly gives us the kind of resolution that we want um, for a consumer-facing application. So um, there are three detection suites um, that we've created, all mirroring the human-to-human uh, human dialogue. So the first is expressive, which is all about uh, capturing your facial expressions in real time, whether you're blinking, smiling, grimacing, flirting, you know, winking, whatever it might be, um, we can capture that in real time. The second suite of detections is effective, which is about understanding your emotional experience in real time. Uh, and the last detection suite is cognitive, which is this ability to move an object just by thinking about it. And with that, um, I'd like to uh, welcome Marvin to the stage to help me um, 
show this. And uh, Marvin, uh, my team, uh, this is a really quick photo of my team in Sydney and San Francisco. It, it, this is a real honour to uh, have Marvin come up on stage. Marvin is a pioneer in artificial intelligence and without your pioneering work, um, we certainly would not have been able to uh, do the kind of things that we've been able to do. So it's a real trip for me and I'm sure my team are really excited that um, I'm showing this uh, with Marvin's help. So if you can um, just take a seat here. This is a live demonstration, and with every live demonstration, there's always a possibility that yes, things don't go according to plan, but we will see how we go. <laughs> so what I'm putting on Marvin's head is um, essentially a high-fidelity uh, EG acquisition device. It's been optimised um, for a consumer setting, so you don't, you know, generally with a brainwave acquisition device, you actually have to have an expert technician put it on and apply conductive gel and conductive paste. It's quite a cumbersome process. Well, I removed a lot of hair. Uh, he did, he did. He's, he's actually a very easy subject to work with. <laughs> <laughs> so Marvin, why, if I'm going to scoot this around so that we can get to you, okay. And what's this? We're going to deny this guy. All right, so I'm going to add a new user. Um, I'm a Mac person. I mean, do you really think this... <laughs> this may not work with Windows. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I'm a Mac person too, but this, this will work fine. Oh, really? We have a little sensor that's fallen off. Thank you so Probably much. Probably one won't matter. One will be all right, but we'd like to have all his brain on. So here we are. We have a all green, which is, is which is good in that little thumbnail there. I'm going to create a new user, Marvin. Okay. So what I'm going to demonstrate here is probably um, in the next several months you'll see this technology being applied in applications, and it will mask a lot of the raw detections that you'll see today. So I thought this would be the, the good opportunity to really showcase um, the detections behind, you know, unveil the detections and what actually happens underneath. Um, so here is um, our software development kit, which really shows the detections in its rawest form. The first thing I'm going to do, which I've already done, is added um, a profile. And so now um, I'm going to, Marvin, what action would you like to train? Oh, let's rotate. Rotate. Anti-clockwise. Uh, and Okay, anti-clockwise. <laughs> Apply that, and I'm going to get rid of this push thing, which is default. So what I'm going to do to begin with, because everybody's brain, as I mentioned earlier, is very different, it's unique, what we're going to do is record a neutral state, which is essentially a baseline recording of Marvin's brain, which there's a lot of, so we're just doing that now. <laughs> and he doesn't have to do anything in particular, he just has to be himself and very comfortable and relaxed um, while we're just taking a sample of um, his brain waves as he's sitting here for 30 seconds. And this, um, in an application like a game context or any sort of internet browser, it could happen while the application's loading because the subject or the, the user doesn't really have to do anything in particular. Well, I hate being comfortable because it's <laughs> terribly boring. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that that's recorded, we're going to record a first reading of Marvin thinking about rotating this cube anti-clockwise. And what I'd like you to do is just to maintain a constant thought of rotating that cube clockwise. And um, what you want to do is just not stop and start, just continue to think that thought. Okay, it's green. So I'll start the training. The first time, nothing will happen because it has no idea how you think about rotating it anti-clockwise. And it will run for six seconds. So can do that now. OK. 
okay, we'll accept that. Now you can try to think about rotating, but you, you, if it doesn't work, we can give it another training because it's only had six seconds to observe your brain waves. Okay, do you want to give it one more shot? Sure. <laughs> okay. Stage fright also has a little bit to play, but two, one uh, six second training is not really quite adequate. So one more. So here we go, so you're starting to respond to him. <laughs> yeah, <babe. laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> still on, yep. Do you want to do one more training so that it's a little bit more responsive to you? Sure. It stopped listening. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. Can you try the opposite direction? I'm trying the opposite <laughs> He's only trained it for this direction. He'll have to show it what it looks like for the opposite direction. Can you train it for I'm sorry? Can you train it for we certainly can. But what I'd like to do is show you something else, which is an entirely new category of detections that we just added this year. Um, and this action... <laughs> thank you, Marvin. It's <laughs> awesome. Uh, this action is disappear and the interesting thing about this action is that it's just an idea it's a it, there's nothing there's no metaphors for it in the physical world you know with anti rotating an object you have some reference point but with disappear it's just an idea and we wanted to see if we could create an idea in someone's mind and then be able to use that as a command to trigger this so this is the first detection of its kind disappear so we're going to give this a go okay i have a plan okay do you want to give it a try do you have both on now I have the disappear on now. Okay. <laughs> that was one attempt at brain thinking. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> can you put both on and see if I can? I can put both on, yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll stop that and go. Wow. <laughs> so that's with several minutes of training in a very um, t intense sort of, you know, environment. If um, you had some time to play with the technology in the comfort of your home, um, in, in an application like a game, which is our very first target market and audience, um, hopefully you'll have a far more compelling experience with, you know, 12 hours of play. So with that, I'm going to switch to a... Um, thank you. Thanks, Marvin. Thank you. Thank you. The future is going to be fun. If it's not, why bother going? The intelligent future will have many new ways to play. Smarter technology will blur the line between what is real and what is not. New immersive games require new ways to play them. Future gamers won't need a joystick or a paddle. They'll interact with their games directly from their brains, using devices like the Epic headset from Emotive. Our whole interaction with the virtual world is going to be far more natural. We'll be able to use our brain um, and our facial expressions and our emotional experiences to really experience content in an entirely new ways. And what we've created is a brain-computer interface that really 
transforms the way that humans interact with machines. The Emotive Epic Wireless Headset has 16 independent sensors that pick up electrical brain signals on the surface of the scalp. We identify um, a signature for a particular thought or a particular emotion, and then in real time, we classify those brain patterns. So when you think it, it happens on the screen. You think push, the object propels forward. So now my master's showing me how to pull using that tree. Then he'll ask me to focus all my thoughts on pulling that tree towards me. There are 13 individual detections. Push, pull, lift, drop, left, right, and then rotation in six different axes in a 3D environment. You can even visualize an object disappearing, and it will. But the headset is more than just a brain-powered joystick. It allows the game to detect whether or not you're actually having fun. It observes your experiences, excitement versus calmness, immersion, tension, frustration, engagement. There are these mischievous spirit wisps that instead of pressing a button, I can scare away just by looking fierce. So, <laughs> and you can notice by the sky color that I enjoy that part. So when it comes to future game playing, keep an open mind. We're really only at the tip of the iceberg in terms of what's possible. So will all this innovation in virtual reality gaming spell the end of a good old-fashioned night out at the movies? So uh, I'll just leave you with... Uh, this is the... What you saw on Marvin was a um, beta version of the headset. This here is from Inc. magazine, the December issue, which is out now, um, of the consumer headset, which will be out in several months. Thank you very much.